a man who needs no introduction, Mr. Rick Rule. At the end of last year, you predicted spectacular gains for junior minors. Why? Well, by one arithmetic measure, this market is off by 75% which is a different way of saying it's 75 percent less expensive than it was in 2010 when it was popular. I don't know what part of a 75 percent off sale that people aren't attracted to. If you would have had the opportunity to buy that dress for 75 percent off, you would have said yes. But people look at financial assets and physical assets differently, and they shouldn't. So in the first instance, things are very, very, very cheap. In my experience over 35 years, bear markets are the author of bull markets. It is bear market expectations and bear market valuations that set up bull market runs. This is now the fourth major cycle of my career. Most of my success has been a consequence of having the financial abil ability and the mental sort of discipline to buy things when they are cheap. It's just that simple. And coincidentally, right now, things are very, very cheap. And there's so much emotion, it seems, that investors have, and you really can't mix the two, can you? Well, the beautiful thing is for an older person like myself who suffered through this a lot, what you learn is that people, the way people feel is very different to the way things are. Ben Graham, the guy who taught Warren Buffett, said that in the near term, markets are voting machines. They measure people's emotion. In the long term, markets are weighing machines. They talk about what things are worth. And successful investors arbitrage the difference between the way people vote, which is almost always stupid, and what stuff is worth. I want to ask you about gold. We didn't, I've never talked to you about gold before. What's with the gold prices? Well, uh, again, the price has fallen from 1900 to 1200 It's fallen by almost 40%. So it's exactly 40% more attractive than it was at 1900. You're always looking at the positive side of this. So are you buying gold? I am buying gold, in fact. Uh, I'm buying gold because I'm a philosophical adherent to the sort of gold bug story, and I've been given my story to 40% off sale. You won't remember this because you weren't born. But in the decade of the 1970s, when gold had that historic run from $35 to 850 a pretty good bull, you know, pretty good move. Right. In the middle of that move in 1975, the gold price fell by 50%. It had gone from 35 bucks to 200 bucks. It fell from 200 to 100. And everybody said the same thing they're saying now. The move is over. The bull run is over. People who lacked the courage and lacked the cash to stay the trade missed a six-year move from $100 an ounce to $850 right, an ounce. Right, right. An act of sheer genius. What amuses me is that people's expectation of the future is set by their experience in the immediate past. People don't have 10-year memories. And as a consequence, people think because the price of gold has fallen, it's going to fall further. The same people who were unreservedly enthusiastic about gold at $1,850 and $1,900 hate it at $1,200. The fact that people act that way is the reason that I have been successful in my life. I've sort of taken a steady path, and mercifully for me, people have made mistakes with enormous amounts of money that have accrued to my benefit. What's your favorite company on the floor right now? Um, this is going to be entirely self-serving. My favorite company on the floor is actually Sprott. Well, okay, other than Sprott. <laughs> That's very difficult because I haven't had a chance to look around all the companies on the floor. I would suspect that of the portfolio that I actively manage, which is about 45 Canadian microcap issuers, that probably 20 of them are present here. This is a very target-rich environment. I don't know that I have a favorite because I haven't taken the time to see who is here and who is not. This is a target-rich environment, he says, the Vancouver Re Resource Conference. Do you not think that this needs to shrink a little bit more? I absolutely do. But one of the things that happens, there's probably 250 exhibitors here mm -hmm. out of a universe of junior resource stocks on a global basis of about 3,000. The people that are here are proactive enough that they're here. They're not saving the rest of the treasury for their own salaries. Right. So one of the things that happens is the fact that they're here is in one sense a segregation. Okay. There are probably a thousand junior issuers in Canada that need to go to issuer heaven. 
probably some of them are here, but probably many of them are not. There are probably companies that have $200,000 left in the treasury, and the managements are saving that $200,000 to pay their salaries until the companies are extinct. And as a consequence of that, they're not here. Well, it's been really nice grabbing you again. Thank you for your time, and we will see you in June. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Small Cap Power's expert interviews. As always, do your own research before making investment decisions. For now, I'm Tara Sweeter. Subscribe to our daily newsletter and be the first to get expert insights and advice from our roster of industry specialists. Smallcappower.com, investment ideas and research.